Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be talking about FPV cameras. In particular we're going to be talking about this little guy, the Runcam. Now this is one that I've only had for a couple of weeks and been testing out and flying and uh, the others are ones that I've been using before. And what I'd like to do in this video is run through the Runcam and compare it to some of these other cameras that are here. So for those of you that might be new to the hobby, you might be looking at this and kind of wondering why we're looking at cameras and why it comes up so often. The difference between these cameras and some of the board cameras that you'll see connected for FPV flights is these have the ability to record the flight locally, typically onto a little SD card in high definition. The older 808 cam uh, records it in good old 720p and the, all these others are capable of versions of 1080p. The difference in recording the flight actually on the craft itself compared to recording the video that you get at the ground station or goggles is worlds apart. Now I'm going to do the run cam in this and we're going to talk about it in quite a bit of detail but what we'll do is first of all just quickly run through what else I've got here on the bench so you have an idea what company is keeping. Uh, first of all these are this is an 808 apologies for the stuff on top it's the gel that I use to mount these for anti-vibration this is an 808 16 camera keychain cam you can tell it was originally designed to be on a keychain to pretend it was something like a car alarm fob but you could record with it has a wide angle lens I think this is a lens B uh, records in 720p I've used these a lot on the channel. There are loads of other videos where we are using them. This was initially my favourite camera. It's come down a lot in price, but the fact it's only 720p has been a bit of a challenge. Some of the colour fidelity was a little bit interesting as well, but you know what? It actually worked great for FPV flying. The other one we'll talk about then, which is probably the closest cousin to the run cam, is our friend the Mobius. Now this has the wide angle lens on it, and this is the one that we'll probably be spending most time doing the comparison with for obvious reasons. Um, the Mobius is a great camera, a little bit more expensive than both the 808 and the run cam, uh, but gives a beautiful image. So we'll play with this Mobius and the run cam and have a go. Challenge with this camera is the latency is quite big, so it's about a fifth of a second. So you are waiting a little bit of time from the image being captured and going in the front of the camera here to appearing in your goggles in FPV. Now a fifth of a second might not sound like a lot, but trust me, if you're flying in close proximity to things, it can mean all the difference. And then we have the Big Daddy. Uh, definitely is the Big Daddy because it probably costs uh, four to five times the amount of a Mobius. Um, fantastic cameras. This is a Hero 3. Obviously there are later and greater versions around. Uh, this is one that goes on a gimbal underneath a large hexcopter. I don't fly FPV looking out of this, although it, all of these cameras will pump out video out the side as well as doing recording at the same time so you can plug them into your FPV kit. So the first thing I need to do is say a massive thank you to the team at Runcam for sending me this to try. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and I'll kind of talk about it in the summary at the end. But I'm not going to take this camera apart and show you the internals and do other bits and pieces. There are lots of other ch RC channels here on YouTube that have done that. For the, this I'm going to focus really on how you actually set it up where you get the software from, how you change the configuration settings so it works for you, how you make sure that you're getting the video out the back so that you can connect it to your FPV equipment. We'll have a little bit of a performance test with the Hero and the Mobius. We'll kind of put them all on a little bit of wood and uh, walk around one of the lanes near me and just see what the colour fidelity looks like, how they cope and also how they handle going from uh, light to dark conditions etc. So we can see the difference and again in theory all of these lenses should give us roughly the same kind of views but we'll actually test that and find out. We'll also talk a little bit about latency as we do that and then finally we'll do a summary. So the first thing we need to talk about then is what you actually get in the box with this thing. So the box it comes in is really nicely made. When you take the top off, uh, the camera itself comes in a bit of foam, we have the manual, we have a little cloth for keeping it clean, we have a mount uh, that it snaps into. Now these are the similar kind of mounts to the ones that come with the Mobius. I like this one because for remote control flying it doesn't have the mount here for a tripod. Now that's quite handy for a Mobius if you want to use it 
uh, on something like a tripod or a gorilla or something else where you want to do video but I couldn't use that little cradle because of that big thing in the middle. This is much easier to use with something like foam or velcro where we want to actually connect this onto the craft so we can snap the camera in and out. You can tell the thought about that. Uh, we obviously get a little cable for plugging it into the PC so it's a mini USB cable which all of us have thousands of and then we have a couple of other cables that we get as well. These are the two magic ones. Uh, the first is the cable that puts into the side so when it's running we can actually get video out so that provides the plus 5 volts ground and the signal out so we can connect that into the FPV kit and we also have this little adapter here so we can plug it into something that has an RCA jack to play the video back which is a nice touch. This is something I like about this, is that this camera is actually designed so you can play video files back. That's something the Mobius can't do. Your only option is to take the SD card out and to pop it into something else to view it. With this you can actually play it back, so if you're using this and you have a ground station or a screen or a TV or anything that has an RCA in connector, you can play your video without having to do anything else. So what we'll do now is we'll actually jump onto the PC and we'll download the software to configure this. Okay, netbook time. The first web address we need to remember is runcam.com. If you type runcam.com into your web browser, you'll come to this site. And this is the Runcam main page area and it shows you all the different things, including all the different cameras. We're looking at the Runcam HD here. Uh, if you go to the download area, so that's runcam.com slash download, I'll actually put this link into the description so you don't have to worry about it, you can download the different files. So there are two files here, one is actually the firmware, which is the firmware for the camera itself. Installing the firmware, we're not going to cover it in this video, but you just download it and install it into the root directory of the SD card. Um, and the other thing we want to download here is this software version 1.3. And this is the Windows graphical user interface that we can use to configure the camera. So I've already downloaded that. So there's the zip file that downloads. And in there is just one directory. And I've just dragged that out onto the desktop. In that directory, there's a couple of files. One is an intro of new features, which could be useful for you to have a look through to find out what's changed in the latest version of the software. If you're watching this after July 2015, it may be a slightly different version. As of the recording of this video, it's 1.3. To start the application, you just double click it. You don't need to install anything. It's one of those things that just runs. And then what we need to do is plug the camera in. So we plug one end of the USB cable into the back of the camera, and then we plug the other end into the PC. Now, the first time you install it, it might actually take a couple of seconds to install and update the driver, but once it's installed, it'll appear as a removable disk. So just like all the other things on your computer, there it is. Removable disk E is actually my little run cam. So we're looking at the SD card, and we know we're looking at the SD card because here's a couple of videos that I've been shooting with it. So we first of all need to load the information in the graphical user interface. So we can decide how we want to have everything set up. So personally, I'm a UK English guy, so I like day, day, month, month, year, year. Uh, 50 hertz is fine. I like PAL output. Most of my FPV equipment is set to PAL, so that will work better. Date and time setting is fine. Movie set, I'm happy with 30 frames a second. We'll uh, go super mover quality, let's have the best we can, 15 minute uh, movie cycle time, so it'll stop and start recording every 15 minutes, that'll work with me, most of my flights don't last longer than 15 minutes, so I should capture the whole thing in one snap, .mov file, that should be a nice efficient way of saving it, um, wide dynamic range, I'm going to keep that off for now for the bits and pieces, Audio will turn on. Uh, the audio on the camera is a bit quiet, but for an FPV camera, I don't think that's a problem. Most of the time I'm turning the volume down from other cameras as well, because all you've got is the, uh, the the noise of the rotors and the noise of the wind, which is just not great to listen to. Well, a date stamp will have that off. We don't want the date appearing on the video. That just clutters it off. We do have advanced settings for things like sharpness, exposure, white balance, if we find it isn't to our liking. And then finally, we have the photo set so we can change all the photo settings too. Last thing we do then, we click generate. 
we then save the config file actually onto the removable disk. So don't change anything, just say save. Now what's actually happened is it saved that configuration file. If we look back on that removable disk, there it is. It's actually um, <laughs> saying it's an open TX configuration file, it isn't. Um, the D CT config file. Next time I power the camera up, it'll actually read that file in, change all the settings, and then delete it. Okay, so now we're at the point where we can actually unplug it and we can put it onto a rig next to other cameras and test what the video's like. So here's the rig that we're going to use. You can see I'm going super high tech. I have a piece of balsa and uh, one side we have the trusty GoPro camera. We have the Mobius in the middle and we have our new run cam on the other side. What I'm going to do is just go out for a quick walk down one of the local lanes. I'm going to fire each of these up and they're going to be recording simultaneously. And then what we can do is come back, put the video side by side and see what it looks like. Look at the field of view, color saturation, and also field of view as well. And also comment on which of these I think actually captured the real image quality of the day as I'm seeing it through my own eyes. So I'm just going to stop the camera there, put on my shoes and go and have a little walk. I'll see you in a sec. So here's the first of our images at the top. The top is the run cam, the GoPro is the bottom left hand corner, and the Mobius is the bottom right hand corner. The audio is actually coming uh, from the GoPro just because it gave me the best fidelity when I was walking down. You can see here that the field of view is probably slightly more on the GoPro, and we'll see that better when we get to the top of the lane but we're walking into very bright sunlight here through uh, overcast area and they're all coping really well with the depth of shadow and colour fidelity is pretty nice too. What I would say is that the run cam is probably providing the most natural colour. The GoPro at the bottom left hand corner, the sky is a little bit bluer than that today while the Mobius in the bottom right hand corner is overblowing the blue a little bit and making it look a little bit artificial. The run cam at the top to me looks like I just had it as I was walking outside. I've stopped here and I'm panning around to try and give you a better idea of the field of view. And you can see that we're getting an extra kind of six, seven, eight, nine degrees each side from the GoPro in the bottom left hand corner compared with the run cam at the top. But if we actually look at what we're getting from the run cam versus the Mobius, so the top versus the bottom right, they are very, very similar, with the Mobius maybe giving us fractionally more. We are using the new f2.8 on the camera, so um, that is giving us a slightly better image for the run cam. So in summary, what do we think? So in summary, I really like this camera. I think for the money it represents an awful lot of bang for the buck. I personally won't be buying any more 808-16 cameras while this is on the market. This is a great camera if you're going to use it like we have here, where you're flying with a primary FPV camera for speed, and you're also using this to record the flight in stunning HD so you can watch it back. There are some nice touches with this that we haven't really had a chance to cover in the video. You might be able to see that there's a very light copper colored line on the inside. The inside of the case is coated with conductive copper, which helps with the RF interference that comes out of cameras like the Mobius. That's a really nice touch. I like the fact the lens is in the middle. I think that's easier for you to do alignment and get a nice centered shot of your flight. The camera itself is slightly lighter than the Mobius, only by a, about a gram. Battery life, battery's a bit smaller than the camera like the Mobius, so you probably won't get as long, but you'll easily get a ton of time out of it. And if you have it plugged into a five volt power supply, then it will be charging as it's being run. So personally, I would say get one, have a go. Don't use it as your primary FPV camera unless you're happy with that lag. But for me, this is where it's going to live now on top of my 250 quad. Thanks again to the team at Runcam for sending me this. And thanks for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.